So, unfortunately it's nearly 2017 and there's still a lot of myths and misinformation around on the topic of eating soy products. Will my estrogen increase? Will my testosterone decrease? Will my biceps deflate? Today I'll be talking about soy consumption and gains, something I'm asked about almost daily. Firstly, we have to try and understand estrogen. Estrogen is usually associated with women, and obviously for good reason. Estrogen is the main female sex hormone. Another one is progesterone, but estrogen is also essential for male health too. The main role for estrogen is to turn girls into women. Now this includes the growth of breast tissue and also starting the menstrual cycle. But estrogen also plays a role in controlling cholesterol levels, protecting bone health in males and females, and also having an impact on sexual function and mood in both sexes too. To be honest with you, I don't think most of you watching will be very interested in this stuff. Most of you guys just want to know, will it give me gyno, gynecomastia or bitch tits? Baiji, today I had a glass of soy milk and you know, my chest just feels really, really funny. Now, before we get there, it's important to remember, estrogen, like testosterone, is a hormone and like with anything in life, balance is key. Now, estrogen that's too high will cause loss of libido, erectile dysfunction, and also excess body fat gain. But estrogen that's too low will also cause the, exactly the same side effects. So as you can see, balance. So the question is, why do people demonize soya and also mention estrogen? Well, the reason there is that soya contains phytoestrogen. But it's not only soya. Beer, pomegranates, oats, and even apples contain phyto phytoestrogens too. Phyto means plant. So phytoestrogen, you got it. It basically means plant-based estrogen or estrogen from a plant. What I want to do now is show you the definition of phytoestrogen and just look out for a keyword. The definition I have here is an estrogen-like compound occurring naturally in plants of the legume family and in grains, vegetables and fruits. I have also seen a compound which mimics estrogen in the body. So as you can see, the keywords I'm mentioning is mimics and estrogen-like. The thing to remember here is that plant estrogens are nowhere near as potent as estrogens found in mammals or estrogens found in your dairy products. Although you'd be correct in saying that soy does contain phytoestrogen, it's important to note that hops the firming agent found in beer has the most potent phytoestrogen known to man. The phytoestrogen in hops is a whopping 50 times more potent than the phytoestrogen found in soy products. But for some reason, beer doesn't get that same demonization. I feel that the most ironic demonization comes from the dairy industry. Dairy products come from a female lactating mammal, meaning there is female hormones present such as mammalian estrogen. And I think this opens up into a much bigger issue. The soya industry has grown rapidly over the last decade into what is now a multi-billion dollar industry with no signs of slowing down whatsoever. The dairy and meat alternative market is projected to reach just shy of 20 billion US dollars by the year 2020. That just gives you some idea of the growth of the sector. Now, what I don't want to do is bring too much agenda and politics into this, but I think you do have to ask yourself which industry is set to face losses with the growth of the dairy and meat alternative industries. Just some food for thought there. The other thing that's just interesting food for thought is that people eating dairy and animal products are concerned about my estrogen levels from eating soy products. Isn't that kind of the same as somebody smoking cigarettes being concerned about my chances of getting lung cancer from eating soy products? It's irony at its best. Now to the research. Luckily we have a recent meta-analysis which has found that neither soya consumption or isoflavone supplements had an impact on free testosterone levels or estrogen levels in men. Now in terms of weighting of the studies, we do have some smaller, um, more flawed rat research and really really small studies on one individual which did find a link between soy consumption and testosterone levels and sperm count. However, the larger clinical studies and this particular meta-analysis just found no effect whatsoever. So a meta-analysis, for those of you who don't know, 
is basically a gathering of hopefully independent researchers who look at the body of research that we have available on any given topic in any kind of time frame. So hopefully it's a, it's a long time frame, meaning like a couple of decades. Uh, all of the available research that we basically have and they make conclusions and basically judge based on the, the overall body of evidence. So what they concluded was that soya consumption does not have an impact on free testosterone levels or estrogen levels in human men. The reason that this has been be become an issue really is because of very, very early flawed rat research. Um, there's a lot of rodent studies as, as those of you are probably aware. Um, and also a very um, isolated incident of a study of one 19 year old diabetic teenager who found, um, and the researchers found, sorry, that his soy consumption linked to his erectile dysfunction, lack of sexual, sexual function, and a decrease in testosterone and sperm count as well. What they don't tell you is that he was eating upwards of 14 servings of soya per day. So in other words, as long as you're not eating your entire 2000 calories from just soya alone, um, you'll be just fine. It's also important to remember that the isoflavones and phytoestrogens found in soya products have been shown to decrease your chances of getting heart disease, be protective against certain types of cancers, and also helping reduce the effects of menopause in women. In my opinion, it's probably best to stick to tempeh and edamame beans, which are more like the original soya bean. Soy milk and tofu, probably mildly processed, and things like TVP, textured vegetable protein, and some of the alternative meat products you get out there are probably more along the lines of highly processed. Making sure it's a non-GMO based soy will also have better health benefits. And it's also worth mentioning that to keep your IGF-1 levels circulating in the blood low, which is one of the benefits of eating a vegan diet in the first place, it's probably advisable not to go above eating five servings of soy per day. So I hope this has been very informative Soy consumption, based on all the information we have to hand, will not affect your gains in the gym. If anything, it will have health-boosting properties, especially when eaten as opposed to meat.